Hello, Intermediate Band, and welcome to this week's edition of our theory assignment. Our topic this week is how to practice. So instead of just saying, go practice your instrument or go practice for band, um, my hope is that I can give you some tips to actually make the most of your time so that you actually get um, more accomplished during the time that you spend on your instrument. And so hopefully this will clear up some things and let's get started right away. Sharing the presentation with you. All right, it's called, how do I get the most out of my practice time? So um, there's about four things that you can do that will greatly affect how effective your time spent on your instrument is. So if you do these consistently, um, over time you will notice a huge difference and a positive difference in how much you're able to get done. Um, the four things, or maybe, yeah, four things, um, is make sure you have everything needed all in one spot. Break time into sections so you have specific goals for each section. Have a, a certain goal that you're trying to accomplish every time and then end with something fun. So let's go a little bit further in depth. These. First of all is assemble the items you need all in one spot. Um, you don't want to be like Jack here um, and running around the house trying to figure out where you left your sheet music or where your reeds are or where your pencil is. Put them all together before you start. Um, and ideally, you will store them in the same spot all the time so that you're not having to run around gathering them all up. Um, what do you need to practice? Well, you need your music and your books and any um, sheets that I give you or your other teachers give you. Obviously, you need your instrument. This may be a no-brainer, but I've had people show up to concerts without it, so I thought I'd put it in there for you. Um, you probably need a music stand or a chair or both. Um, I like to stand when I practice, but if you're going to be practicing a very long time or if you have a large instrument, sometimes it's nice to sit instead. A pencil, 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 pencil. You need one every time you play. It should be part of your music stand. Um, and always mark your music in pencil and not pen. Um, I like to have water with me all the time, but especially when I'm practicing because it just my mouth gets really dry so that might be a personal preference. Um, the last thing is a metronome and a tuner and I have one on my phone now but they make them that you can buy at, from Amazon or from a music store or whatever that have a metronome and tuner all in one and what these things allow you to do is the metronome helps you with your rhythm, helps you um, keep on a steady beat and break down rhythms and then the tuner tells you whether the note that you are playing is sharp or flat against a standard pitch. And both of these things are essential to be um, moving to the next stage of your practice and your ability on your instrument. So if you don't have one, now's a good time to put those things on your birthday and Christmas lists and say, hey, one thing that would really help me is a metronome and a tuner. And again, I got them for free on my phone. So if your parents will let you borrow your their phone or maybe you have a phone, you can download it um, and they are free and they work just as well as the ones you buy specifically for that. So the main thing on this screen is take them, all of these things and get it ready before you start to practice. It's no fun to have to stop and try to track down one of these items in the middle of your practice time. So break your time into sections. You have um, agreed to practice 30 minutes for five days a week and that's the part of the agreement for our band. So um, you guys all sign that at the beginning, hopefully you remember that. So I'm going to show you how to break up that half hour time period to make it be 
really um, helpful and beneficial for your practice time. Five minutes. Um, this is pro probably the most important. You need to warm up. You need to warm up your face, your instrument, your reeds, all of that stuff. And the best way to do this is long tones. Long tones, long tones, long tones. How long can you play a beautiful pitch sustained without having to breathe? Um, start with eight counts, kind of slow counts, and work up to it. Um, you should be able to do about 16 counts by the end of this quarter. If you're practicing long tones weekly, you will get better and better. And while you're playing them, I would like you to really listen and see if you are pleased with the sound that you are making from your instrument. And if not, work toward making it a sound that you are pleased with and that others would like to listen to for long periods of time. Long tones are really important and a lot of people think that they're boring so they don't do them, but it's much like planking or something in a, it just gives your muscles a chance to work hard for an extended period of time. And there's really nothing that's going to make you sound better than actively doing long tones. I can't stress that enough. Five minutes doesn't seem long when you're writing it, but if you're trying to do long tones for five minutes, it sounds like a long time. <laughs> the next 10 minutes should be your skill practice. This is where you do all the book exercises. Um, that's where you learn how to do your scales, um, any other skill related activities. So if there's a new fingering you need to learn, or maybe you're working on staccato tonguing or um, extending your range either higher or lower. All those things fall under skill and you should spend about 10 minutes of your half hour time working on this thing, these things. Um, they're not, it's not learning a specific song. So these are learning how to play your instruments. That's why we call them skill sessions. Make sure that you have the book assignments that you're working through and you understand those and also your scales, because all of these things will make it so that you can play any piece of music um, in the future and you won't have to learn every piece of music separately. Um, so you can take all of these skills and now you can apply those to music. Okay, so with five minutes of long tones or warm ups, 10 minutes of working on skills. The next is what people usually think of when they say I'm going to practice for band and that is the sheet music. Um, this is where usually you'll say, oh yeah, I've practiced. I played that song four times. Um, and if you made any mistakes in those four times, you probably didn't practice. You probably just ran through them. So um, my suggestion is after you've done the first 15 minutes, take your sheet music or any other piece of music that you're working on, actual songs, and then um, play through it and note where you are making mistakes. Then go to the first place that you've made a mistake and just play that measure, only that measure, until you can play it correctly. Break it down, make it really slow, um, figure out the rhythms if there's any weird fingerings that you need to do or figure out why you're making the mistake and then fix that. And maybe you only get a couple measures done in a practice session, that's okay. And the next day you come back and pick up from there. Um, just running through the, the song start to finish doesn't really give you very much practice on that. You need to break it down and take small sections of it so that you can actually get better at it and then don't make that mistake the next time you play it. Okay, so that should take you about 10 minutes. You have five minutes left over. What on earth are you going to do with it? This is where you um, get to have some fun and pr pretty much everyone I've ever met has something that they love to play. Maybe it's a Disney song or um, something that you learned at church or just some fun little ditty that you figured out on your own. Um, you should always end your practice session with something that you really enjoy doing. Um, you've done your hard work, you've done your long tones and you've worked on your skills. Now you need to remember why you became a musician in the first place and just play something just for fun. Um, this is where you can just go straight through and whatever happens happens and you just enjoy it. So here's your half hour broken down in something that makes sense and if you do this consistently you will um, see huge results quite soon. 
Um, the next thing is to have a specific goal for the session. Um, so a lot of times you just say, well, I got to get my practice time in and that is your goal. But as you mature a little bit as a musician, you need to start having musical goals for your time. Um, and so think about exactly what you want to achieve during this time. Is there certain phrase in the music that you always mess up? Well, then your goal that day is to fix that one measure so that you don't have to have that problem anymore. Um, every time you play a D, is it always sharp? saxophones. <laughs> yeah, so see if you can get your tuner out and fix that problem, figure out what you need to do to change that. Um, a smart goal is specific, which means that you can say, yes, I am trying to play measure 32 correctly. Um, it's measurable, so then at the end of it, you can say, yes, I have done that. I played it correctly. Yay, go me. Um, it's attainable, so yes, I may want to learn to double tongue on trumpet, but if I'm just learning, I probably can't, that's not an attainable goal for me right now. So make sure it's something that you can actually do. I remember uh, listening to Rhapsody in Blue when I was in sixth grade and thinking, oh, tomorrow I'm going to learn that on my clarinet. That was not an attainable goal for me at that point. So make sure it's something you can accomplish. Um, it, it's also relevant. So make sure that it's going to transfer to the music that you're expected to play um, for the group you are practicing for. So if you want to slap tongue or growl or do all those other kind of fun things on your instrument, but none of your music in band requires you to do that, it's probably not a very relative goal and you can go move that to your for fun section. Um, doesn't mean you can't learn to do it. It just means that that's not part of your practice time for band. It's part of your fun time. And then um, make sure that you can accomplish it within a reasonable amount of time. Some goals are long term and some are just that one session. So set a time limit for yourself. By Thursday, I should be able to play measure 32 correctly five times out of six. That's a very specific goal. <laughs> I'm going to say it again, end with something fun. This is really important to keep you motivated and keep you enjoying your instrument. Um, music is supposed to be fun and it really truly is once you can play whatever it is that you're trying to play. Um, and that word play is what we use most of the time when we're talking about this, right? We don't say we work music. It is work and there are some things that you have to get through before you can learn new stuff, but you can always play something fun, even if it's hot cross buns that you learned two years ago and you just really enjoy playing that one or you just have some favorite song. Make sure that you're feeding that part of yourself so that you don't get frustrated and bogged down with just learning new hard stuff all the time. Do something that you really love and um, if you do these things consistently, you really will have a very much more effective time that you are spending on your instrument. Um, doesn't mean that other kind of practices won't help, but you won't progress as fast as you will if you think about these things. You'll have a lot of wasted time and um, we don't really like to waste time in our culture. So let's make sure that we are spending quality time um, getting our instrument ready. Um, thank you for those of you who are turning in your theory assignments. There's nothing to turn in this week. Um, so you kind of get a break. If you're behind, you can turn in your ex, you know, the stuff that you're behind on, get caught up. Um, there's nothing, no take home assignment this week. Um, there may be a online fun quiz Kahoot coming to you, but I'll tell you about that and another email if that happens um, based on this message. So um, if you haven't come say hi to me at band yet, come say hi to me. I haven't met some of you yet and I'm kind of feeling sad about that. So um, just poke your head and say, hey, I'm in another section. <laughs> I'd be happy to meet you and hopefully we can see each other soon. See you later. <laughs>